Welcome to the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life. My name is Kyle Case, and I'll be your host on this amazing journey as we attempt to help you get the most out of your life. Do you know how tempted I am to say that with you, Kyle? <laughs> You've heard it enough times. I've heard it once or twice, you? yes. Well, joining me today in the studio is Jeff Harding. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you, Kyle? Good, good. I'm really good. Thanks for asking. It's a great day. It is. It is. So, listen, we, we've all seen it. What have we seen? We've all seen that commercial with the nice old lady who has fallen and can't get up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? And and that scratchy voice, help, yeah, I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, so you've seen it. I've we, we've all seen it. It's yeah. become something of a Cultural. kind of a, a joke that just never, ever, ever ends. Fodder right? for Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. For years still to come. Yes. Yeah, yes. so it goes on and on and on. But falls are really nothing to, to, to take not. lightly. I no. mean, it's a, it's a serious thing, and especially for the more aged in our society. Did you know that over 25 Excuse me, 250,000 older Americans are hospitalized for a hip fracture every year. Wow. That's a lot of people. That, that is. That I mean, that's, is. that's a big deal. And, and uh, most of those injuries are caused by a fall. So here's the deal. I'm going to share five things that we can do to reduce the risk of falls. Okay. Is the okay? first one don't fall? The first one is not don't fall. Okay. Okay. So. And neither is the second, third, or fourth, or fifth. <laughs> okay. Well, then I can't wait to hear what the, <laughs> what the five things are. Okay. The first one, all of these are just common sense things, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, they're, but, they're, but they are good common sense. So the first one is to clear the floor. Very important. So falls happen most often at home, according to the National Safety Council. And common sense tips start with removing floor clutter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, get rid of the small furniture, throw rugs, electrical cords, pet gear that can make you trip. Well, and it's ironic because a lot of older folks like to have throw rugs down to keep their carpet clean, but right. the carpet clean, but that becomes an obstacle. A, a, a fall hazard. Oh, really. yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. So another thing you can do is wipe up spills immediately when they happen so that mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not slipped or, or sticky. And then non-skid non mats or appliques in the bath and shower can make surfaces Less hazardous. Oh, certainly. Certainly. So, important stuff there. Number two, look out for outdoor falls. It's ha it, it happens yeah. outside, you know, especially in the winter. And, we're, you know, we're coming into the spring now. Right. So we're going to be leaving that season behind. But icy sidewalks, snowpacked stairs, and slit curbs can provide falls at any age. Right. But for older people, they're more vulnerable to risk serious injuries. So avoid going out alone on ice or snow if it's possible. Ask someone to spread salt or sand on icy surfaces during the winter. And if you must go out, wear boots with good traction. Right. And you have less control over nature than you do in Absolutely. your home. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you really got to be careful. So definitely. Take somebody with you. Don't, you know, don't, don't be ashamed. Give that elbow if you need to. That's right. And be really careful when you're out there. The next one, number three, lighten up. Proper lighting helps prevent falls and trips. That's true. And uh, so light switches by all of your entrances to halls and rooms, fixtures with at least two bulbs in vital areas, such as the exits and the bathrooms, and switches placed in easily accessible locations can reduce accidents in the dark. Right. How many times you get up in the night and you're fumbling around Certainly, and just think, well, I won't hit the light, or, yeah. or you go to hit the light and you stumble on your way there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so if you can lighten things up, that can lessen the potential for falls. Makes perfect sense. Okay, number four. We talked a little bit about this one already, but number four is to make bathrooms safer. It's really where a lot of falls happen. They do. They do. So bathrooms, they're, they're a common site for falls in the middle of the night when people aren't fully awake or not fully oriented. It's easy. It's easy to trip and uh, you know go down while you're fumbling for a light switch. Wet, slippery shower stalls and hard bathtub surfaces can lead to serious injuries. They really fall. can. We, we've seen that. We've all seen that. Yep. Toilet safety frames and rails are simple modifications that can make sitting and rising easier. Place slip-resistant flooring and install wall grab bars for support. And then they also recommend that you use lower bathtubs to allow for easier and better access. Yeah. Uh, for stand-up showers, the uh, recommend, recommendation is curbless entrances and wider stall spaces and fold down shower seats and adjustable or handheld shower heads with hoses also help. It does. So things to think about. Now, my, my 80 year old folks just a few years ago had me install handrails in their yeah. bathrooms, yeah. lift rails. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're already being proactive there. So, yep. so awesome. The last one is, uh, is more of a proactive approach, and that is to build balance. So they recommend that regularly practicing some sort of, uh, of yoga 
is one way for seniors to build balance. It prevents falls, and it even improves your serenity. That does. You have to stretch, though. Yes. The, which, well, we've which talked, we've we discussed. That's, that's, not, uh, that's, that's a... not either of our specialty. Well, maybe we can just stretch our minds. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Our, our minds can be stretched. Yoga does have several advantages. Many senior citizen, excuse me, senior centers offer free yoga classes. And for those who prefer to practice in privacy, all you need is a mat. Right. And there's YouTube videos. There's there's channels. I mean, you, doing yoga is a, is very accessible. Thing. Right. However, they found in a 2008 study that there are two fitness practices that are even better for promoting uh, good balance. And that is. Can you guess? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say them and you'll recognize them. The ancient discipline of Tai Chi. Okay. That, that makes sense, right? right? It does. You see that? And then the more modern uh, Pilates, oh. which focuses on strengthening the body's core and, and which would tends to lead to better right. balance. Right. So anyway, important things to think about, uh, you know, as right. as uh, as you age and or as you take care of parents who are aging, as as you mentioned, Jeff. Right. Uh, things that we can do to avoid the falls and and um, you know, really, that's something worth avoiding. Well, it is. <laughs> just just as a side note, my mother uh, two months ago was was visiting my sister yeah. and got up and wasn't fully aware yeah. fell down and broke both of her wrists your mom did my mom did oh i didn't know that yeah she's had casts oh, on both she's, she's now to braces but she's had casts on oh, both wrists wow, for for 6 weeks and yeah so so you have to be careful you do have to be careful yeah darn it well i'm glad she's getting better yes so am i get to, better mom yeah today our guest is one of our amazing athletes she's also an ambassador her name is bonnie Parishnell. And uh, we're glad that you can join us today, Bonnie. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So Bonnie has competed as a triathlete as well as in race walking and power walking uh, at the Huntsman World Senior Games. And uh, we're just excited to visit with you. I, I pronounced your name incorrectly. I'm sorry. Bonnie Parrish Kell. That's correct. I inserted an N on my own. <laughs> my that. Loose fingers on the keyboard. But uh, we're glad that you're here. Thank you. So... We want to get to know you a little bit better. So you, you've competed as an athlete at the Huntsman World Senior Games. Yes. But, but tell us, were, were you always an athlete? Is it something you did as a child? Well, I'm what I consider an adult onset athlete. Um, there was, <laughs> I like that phrase, adult that, that, onset athlete. I think athlete. that's what we need to coin. <laughs> I like it. I like um, it. Yeah, it was a case where you know I played volleyball and basketball when I was in high school many, oh, so you, many so you, so you centuries did play ago. at least a little bit when you were younger. Yeah. And then I, um, I always loved bicycling, and there was a, a number of years I bicycled everywhere. Yeah, and, but then, you know, you get started on your career, you yeah. get stuck in front of a computer, and since I do basically computer work, whether it's marketing or writing or whatever, I'm stuck in front of the computer all the time. Yeah. Right. So when I turned the big five zero, I was like, okay, I want to be a kid again. I want to get active again. What, what do I want to do? So... My mom always said, Bonnie, you are just one crazy gal. I don't know if I got the right baby from the hospital because I decided <laughs> I wanted to try out to do a triathlon. <laughs> and everyone thinks, you know, it's going to be the Ironman in Hawaii. And I'm like, yeah. no, let's, that'll be next we'll year. Start a we'll start smaller. on the smaller scale. So I uh, started with triathlon and I did a beginner distance here in the city of St. George, put on by the Parks and Recreation Department. And I thought I was going to drown in a 200-yard swim. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just panicked. And I realized, okay, number one, I'm not an athlete. Blew my <laughs> ego. And I knew I needed help. So living in Las Vegas, I found a triathlon coach. And Jackie really helped me with my swim yeah. to where when I actually went to Lake Mead, I felt like I can swim with the fishes and not drown. And Which is slowly very, but surely, very important in an open water <laughs> swim. If we prefer that they not <laughs> yeah. drown, yes. Yeah. So, you know, going through her training programs and her group classes and things that were going on out at Lake Mead, by the time I actually did my very, very first triathlon in Vancouver, British Columbia, I was like, okay, this, I did this. You were ready And people to go. were thinking I was weird because here I am from Las Vegas and I didn't think the water was that cold. Canadians were saying that the water was cold. So it was really a really weird <laughs> um, experience. And that was actually also the first year I decided to do the Huntsman World Senior Games oh, awesome. Triathlon. Yeah. And I was dead last. That's because I don't have a, I don't run. I'm a uh, walker. Uh -huh. But I was just so inspired to see 85-year-old women just blowing past me. Out there doing it, huh? On the bike. 
<laughs> and of course on the run. Yeah. I'm like, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> so it was really great. That's and so awesome. you've had a, you know, an athlete ever since then. Though yeah. I have moved on to power walking Different and sports. also race walking. And I, I want to talk about that as well. But I, I, I love your story because it's it's not as atypical as you think among the Huntsman World Senior Games athletes. A lot of people start out just, just like you. Maybe they did something in high school or maybe they didn't do anything at all in high school. But but most of us you know, do, do some level of something or have an opportunity. And then, like you said, real life sets in. You've got You've got bills to pay. You've got jobs to be at, you've got families to raise, you, you know, you've got children, you, all those things happen. And, you know, so, so the, 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 the competition and the, the time that's available to be physically active becomes more strained and it's difficult. Not that it can't be done. Some people are able to do it, but it's hard. It's difficult. And so we get a lot of adult onset of athletics. Exactly. Athleticism. Yeah. Adult onset athlete. I like that. I like that so much. And, you know, having to work out, in order to get stronger, um, is, is great. It's because it's one of the best health benefits that we can have. Certainly. But what I found m- even more enjoyable is the friendships I have made through quote competitors. And basically yeah. when, when all of us senior athletes get together, it's more like a huge party. We're all cheering each other on. And that along with the sport of triathlon really just blew my mind away because in most of my prior experiences, it was, you know, I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm going to beat you. Competition. That sort of thing. And with with what the senior games here in St. George does, it promotes camaraderie and support. And it's just like one big party out here. Oh, by the way, we have competitions you got to go for, too. <laughs> so it's it's really, um, I really enjoy it. I can't wait for this year. So I'm, I'm interested. I want to focus a little bit more on this transition from... Uh, I'm not really doing anything right now. To uh, I'm going to do a triathlon, which which does seem like a bit of a, a bit of a leap. It was so, a stretch. <laughs> so you're living in Las Vegas, yes. But you heard about the triathlon in St. George, or how mm-hmm. did how did you do the one that was here? And and like, so you you know you heard about it, but then what made you say that is the thing I'm doing? Well, I've always liked a challenge, and I'm also one of those I'm never going to quit. So I wanted to have a challenge, and that's why I chose triathlon. But I wanted a sh- short distance. And after I started out and realized how far out of shape I was, yeah, um, I decided, well, there's got to be venues for slow poke athletes like me. <laughs> and so that's when a friend of mine told me about senior games. And so, of course, I do the Google search. Yeah. And I find out that one of the largest ones in the entire universe is just up the road from Las Vegas and St. George. So I thought, what the heck? Easy it's a access, po- It's a right? pool swim. Yeah. So, and it's the same venue as um, what I had tried out before. So I was familiar with that. And like I said, I just had a great time. And the following year, I did the triathlon again. I think I did it 20 minutes faster. Wow. I was still, I was still last, but increase. I didn't care. Yeah. You know. But you had fun. Yes. Yes. So I think most people know this, but just in case there's someone who who maybe isn't familiar with the sport of triathlete, it's it's three sports that's rolled into one event. Yes. You start out with the swim. Yeah. And so in the in the one that you did, the very, very first one, it was a two hundred meter swim, which is a little bit lower than than yes. what the, they call a swim. The city of distance. St. George had a beginner triathlon, yeah, which was a two hundred yard swim, so that's like four laps. Yeah. And then I think it was like a five mile bike ride and a mile and a half run. Run. When I got done with that after about three hours or what it felt like, (laughs) I slept the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. So I have worked up to where um, uh, at the time when I was doing the triathlons, I was able to do a sprint distance, a full sprint distance of about a quarter to a, um, a half a mile swim, open water swim, whether it was in Lake Mead or up in, um, in the ocean water of Vancouver, B.C., and then cycling about 15, 18 miles. Right. And then doing a 5K or 3.1 mile run. For me, yeah. it was a run, you know, a walk, even though everyone else was running. Yeah. So still, even for me to do all that, it was three hours. So I always chose a triathlon that was having other distances going on at the same time. Right, that way right, I right. knew. And I would always choose a race that had a finisher medal. Because I knew I was never fast enough to win, but I wanted to have that token. Be able to say, yeah, I did that. Well, if nothing else, it's a memento and it, it helps you remember the experience. And also inspiration and encouragement to do the next one. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to get another one. Oh, 
Well, what does their finisher medal look like? Oh, yeah, I want that one. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> so I have weird ways of, you know, choosing a race. No, that's awesome. Well, you're listening to the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life. We're visiting with Bonnie Parrish Kell, an athlete at the Huntsman World Senior Games. She's been a triathlete and she's uh, been sharing some of those experiences with us. With us. Um, I, I have a somewhat similar experience with triathlon. I, on a whim, decided I was going to do one, but I was not as wise as you. I didn't do the beginning <laughs> distance. When I, when I was contemplating this concept, everything was an abstract number to me. I didn't have any point of reference. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'll just do the Olympic distance, oh, no. which is twice of everything that you've just described for a sprint distance. And mm -hmm. then um, I w because of work and family and things, I really did not train. I did not prepare. And, but like you, I, I finished dead last. But oh. I was, you know... Um, but you did it. But I did it, you know. Yeah. I, I did it. And then I've, I've done a, a couple since then. I don't consider myself a triathlete. I, I don't go out of my way to, uh, to compete. But I've done a few of them. And I will tell you, there are few things that are more rewarding than crossing the finish line mm -hmm. in a triathlon. Now, wasn't your first one an open water swim as well? Yeah, it was. was. Here, here in town, it was at yeah. the Sand Hollow Reservoir. Resort. I remember that. And man, I, I was not prepared. And so it just that was the scariest part for yeah. me. I backstroked almost all of it. Wow. And I was literally the very last person out of the water. By the time I was done, every kayak, every <laughs> lifeguard, they were all just following me, you know? <laughs> there, there were literally like 12 or 15 kayaks that were just, pat they were just having a great you time talking. You quite the posse, did you? Oh, I had. I had everybody following me, and I don't blame them because I'm sure I looked like I was in bad well, shape. I've had paramedics, police, highway patrol following me on the bike because <laughs> right. I've been the last one. Yeah, it yeah, happens. So. It happens. But that, but again, that satisfaction of finishing the mm -hmm. race is is incredible. So you've you competed for a few years as a triathlete. Mm -hmm. You've now transitioned to race walking and power walking. Why right. the transition? Well, I developed basically what my physical therapist said: a golfer's elbow. So really? a part of the freestyle stroke is actually painful on my elbow. Okay. So I decided I'm not going to give up being active. I just need to figure out what else I'm going to do. So I decided to try uh, power walking and then ease into race walking since that's a more technical, physically technical uh, sport. And I'm also looking at doing getting back into cycling perhaps this year. Great, great. So I just got to keep moving. Yeah. And the thing – the cool thing about race walking is that I feel like I can, I can just do it forever and ever. So, um, and so once and again, just for people who aren't familiar, but power walking is essentially in its simplest terms, it's just walking as fast as you can. Correct. You always have to have one, one foot, on, foot the ground, on the ground or a part of your foot on the ground at all times. Yeah. It's the same way with race walking, but your forward leg has to be straight. So and that's if you're the not, difference. Yes. And so if you're not able to keep your knees straight on that race walking technique, you need to be in power walking. Otherwise you get disqualified and then, and then you lose the out. fun in that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've had race walkers on our show before and, and that's, yep. that's really the difference. It's that knee that has to be straight. And Correct. that's what kind of gives race walking that, that interesting gait. But um, but we offer both at the Huntsman World That's Senior right. Games, and we have great athletes, everyone from beginner to expert in in both areas. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like Bonnie said, if if you're if you're a little intimidated by the technique of race walking, then just do the power walking because what a what a great way to just get out and be active. Yeah. And there's quote nothing wrong with power walking. I mean, no. it's a case where it, there are people who can either race walk or power walk faster than some people can run in a 5k so i mean it's really amazing but the thing is you don't have to be fast not with the senior games this is a case of you know you come out you give it your best shot that's all you can ever ask for yourself anyways is to do that's your right. best absolutely and have fun doing it yeah so the elbow kind of pushed you out of yeah. out of the, the swimming part but mm -hmm. you've you've determined to stay active which oh, i yes. think is amazing now, how many times have you competed as a, a race walker or a power walker at the games? Um, I ha let's see. Um, I expect to compete this year, so I will have competed six years, six years out of possible seven. Okay. I'm, I missed because of a scheduling conflict. Yeah. So, but now I'm scheduling my life around <laughs> making it to the games. Great choice. <laughs> Great since, yeah. we choice. since we don't move the dates of yeah. the games very much, I mean, yeah. there might be a day or two difference, but we're really, I mean, we're pretty No, consistent. really, the, the games are, are scheduled at a perfect time of year for Southern Utah. It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you never and know, it's going to be too hot you know. or too cool, and sometimes we have wacky weather in between, but 
it it's just a beautiful time of year to mm-hmm. come out to St. George and have fun. And be a part of it. So yeah. you touched on something that I want to just focus a little bit on as well, and that is the camaraderie that exists mm-hmm. when the games are going on. Of, co- of course people come and there's a competition, and you know, no, no one likes to go out of their way to lose. We all want to win. But when it's all said and done, the experience at the games is much more about the friendship and the camaraderie than it is about the competition and the times and, and maybe the, the medals around your neck. Have you made any friends that you just made specifically here that you wouldn't have made anywhere else? Yes, I've uh, made several friends here in the St. George area um, who live here who have competed in the games and also um, competitors who come from you know other parts of the world. And we stay in touch, you know, through Facebook and social media and like that. And what's really nice is that I get to see some of these same faces and same friends at other um, senior games in the area. And so, it, you know, it's just like one big party all year long. And, it ke- and there again, it helps with the inspiration and motivation to keep, you know, pumping iron or doing whatever you need to do in order to stay ready for the next competition or just getting up off the couch really that's That's what it's all about you know and and that's again one of the things that i just love about the huntsman world senior games is it provides that opportunity you can come and you can be a world champion athlete and you'll find competition here yes but more likely you're just like the rest of us and you just want to be active and you just want to go to a fun event and and make some friends and uh, you know try to try to be healthy and that's what the games offers. Now, Bonnie, I have a, a quick question for sure. you. We've talked about the competition, the camaraderie, which is really around the competition. But the games is so much bigger than even just a single event. It's it's huge. What outside of the competition is your favorite part of the games? Uh, going and watching some of the other competitions, uh, whether it's pickleball or softball or even soccer. I mean, last year when I saw the women playing soccer, I was yeah. like, I want to get back out there because I used to play goalie at one point. I was like, I want to play again. <laughs> so, you know, it's a case where you have the walking tours, you have the opening ceremonies. There are so many things that the games has to offer that, you know, it's not just a competition. It's one big party. Yeah, it's it's an event. It's an experience. Really, it's a really very is. warm welcome for everybody. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're so glad that you're uh, that you're a part of it. If you had any advice for someone who's on the fence on whether or not they should come out and be a part of it, what would you say to them? Uh, I would say just do it. You know, it's a case of just go to the website, sign up for a a sport or an event that you feel you have a little bit of a challenge for. I suggest power walking because, I mean, we all walk. You don't have to pick up a tennis racket or a racquetball. But sign up for power walking. Come on out and enjoy the time here in St. George. Enjoy the competition and you'll get hooked. I can, pro- I can guarantee you, you'll get hooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you once again so much, Bonnie. For thank being you for having me. I really us. appreciate it. We, we You've appreciate been a delight. you taking time out of your day. That's awesome. That's a, about the time that we have for Bonnie. But just a, a couple of things to wrap things up here. We've been talking about it now for a few weeks, but registration for the games is open. It's open. We have uh, actually registered over 1920 total athletes, which is wow. just incredible for it this is. time of year. We opened that on is. the 1st of March, so we're just 1 month into registration and we're <laughs> already at almost 2000 athletes. Uh, almost 20% of our, yeah. our total. So we've also been talking about for uh, a while that pickleball is closed. <clears throat> That's right. We know that bowling is Almost closed. Darn, I think some events are, actually. Yeah, I think that there are some events in bowling. There are some age groups in softball uh-huh. that we've closed down because we've reached our cap and also and volleyball. volleyball. Yeah. So now is the time to register. <laughs> Don't wait. You think, well, it's in October. It's a long ways away, but now is the time. It is a long ways away, but be proactive. Yeah, be proactive. We've also talked a lot about this being our 30th anniversary Big year. Big party time. And so because of, because of the 30th anniversary, there are several things that we're doing throughout this registration season to mm-hmm. kind of celebrate and, and move things along. And we've set some goals for ourselves. And one of those goals is that we want to register 10,950 athletes at as, as a minimum. At least, yeah. And the reason for that is because there are 10,950 days in 30, 30 years. years. So we want one athlete for every day that the games have been going on. And you can help us with that by going to our website, which is www.seniorgames.net. That's www.seniorgames.net. If you go to seniorgames.net slash ambassadors, you can sign up to be an ambassador, an official ambassador Just of the like Bonnie. World Senior Games like Bonnie is, and help us spread the word through brochures and posters and things like that. And we would love to have that help. So uh, thank you for joining us today. 
If you uh, enjoyed the show, catch us on our website at SeniorGames.net where you can listen to this as well as any other previous podcast. And uh, between now and then, don't forget to stay active. Bye, everyone.